โอตัสสะปะวะโตอะระโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมตัสสะปะวะโตอะระโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมตัสสะปะวะโตอะระโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะเอ้ hello everybody right uh, we are having another spiritual cultivation retreat online um I'm not sure if I'll be having another one in the future, uh, since we are going to have we are moving back to old norm. <laughs> so, um, but just to let you know, I um, do intend to have one physical retreat next year. Um, at the moment, um, planning in Penang. Uh, other other than that, um, none yet. Uh, just let you know. Okay, so as usual, I'd like to give you all some uh, basic ideas about the uh, this. And for those of you who have heard this many times, it's still a good idea to hear it again. Because we are, uh, we tend to be forgetful. Yeah, so it's good to remind ourselves uh, these very basic things. We tend to be forgetful, and once we forget these new things that we learn, um, we will go back to our old ways. Old habits die hard, as they say. So if we don't remind ourselves of the New things that we learn, it's easy for us to go back to the old ways. So um, it's important for us to keep reminding ourselves of the right views, the right attitude, and things like that, so that uh, we don't fall back so easily to the old ways. So, like again, um, for this retreat, I like to remind everybody that. Your aim is to learn. Your aim is to learn, and learn and learn. The way you why you can practice well is because you learn, you learn. Why you understand more is because you learn. Uh, why you don't do well is because you haven't learned. <laughs> so uh, it's about learning. If you don't know how to do it, then you can't possibly do it right. So it's about learning. Yeah, as opposed to trying to get something, trying to get somewhere. Yeah, if we think of the practice as in trying to reach certain things, get something, then we are not so interested in learning anymore. We are busy trying to get somewhere. Trying to get somewhere meaning trying to get something that we that's uh, that we don't have that is not present. We're thinking of a future that does not exist. It's just an idea that we have in our minds. If we want to practice well, then we our job is to learn. It's just like riding a bicycle. If you want to be able to ride a bicycle well, you learn. It's not just about thinking. Okay, before you know how to ride a bicycle, I'm going to get there. Stay here. Don't talk about there. You need to be here. So, um, so again, to learn, we want to learn. This is our our job. This is our aim to learn. This learning is actually is gaining wisdom. We talk people sometimes they talk about you no know, wisdom. One day, what what's wisdom? I don't I don't have wisdom. What to do? So, <laughs> so if you want to gain wisdom, you learn. It's about learning. Yeah. There are three kinds of wisdom. One is the first one is the learning, the learning kind of wisdom you learn from somebody else when you don't have it. Yeah. So it's it's like my my teacher would say, you know, if if you don't have, you want to start a business and you don't have money, and you got to borrow. You borrow money. Yeah. So now you're borrowing. You're borrowing from me. Yeah, but don't worry. I'm not. Won't ask. I won't ask for the wisdom back. In fact, please don't give it back to me. Keep it. 
<laughs> use it, apply it. Yeah. And I would hope that you, with that money, with that wisdom capital that you have, you will grow uh, in wisdom. Don't keep coming back and borrow. <laughs> right? Should be able to use that wisdom and then uh, do well with it. Of course, from time to time, as you find yourself needing to expand your business, then come back to me. <laughs> right. So we want to gain wisdom. And it is through gaining wisdom that we are able to let go. Um, the, of course, we are not learning. We are not learning for the sake of learning only. The purpose ultimately is to be free from suffering. And to be free from suffering, we need to let go. And uh, so it, it is not about getting things. It's the opposite. It's about letting go. The practice, the spiritual practice is not about becoming this, getting this, getting that. It's the opposite of it. So we need to remember these things because if we don't remember, then we go back to our old ways, our old habits, old ideas. I need to get somewhere. There's this uh, interesting story, uh, anecdote of, uh, it's happened in the West, in America, Ajahn Tani Saro uh, organized a retreat. His, his teacher from Thailand went over and uh, so he organized a retreat there in America. And sometime in the midst of that retreat, uh, there was one woman who complained to the teacher saying that, I'm not getting anywhere. And after translating to his teacher and this is teacher's uh, response was, uh, where do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good question. Where do you want to go? <laughs> People are, are very eager to get somewhere when they don't actually know where they want to go. They have some ideas of what it is. You know, People want to get enlightened, but do they know what, what that is? Don't know. <laughs> but I want to get enlightened anyway. <laughs> right? So... Forget about that. Forget about that. If you want to get enlightened, you want to be free from suffering and all that, then your job is to learn. Your job is to learn. You learn how to practice. You learn how learn learn about yourself. Learn about what is what causes you suffering. Learn about suffering and what causes suffering. And it is through that learning that you are able to let go. Letting go happens when there is enough wisdom to let go. Letting go doesn't happen because you want to. Yeah. And tell yourself, let go, let go, let go 10,000 times, that's not going to happen. But when there is enough understanding of that which you are not able to let go of before, when there's enough understanding, then the letting go happens. So that's our job, just to learn. Right. So if you focus on that, if you focus on creating the right conditions, then the right conditions, the right causes, then the result happens naturally. So you don't need to worry about the results. Just focus on creating the right conditions. Yeah. Just, just like doing business, same. Don't have to worry about hitting a target and all that stuff. If you do the right thing, if you are creating the right causes, then of course you will make money. So you just focus on the cause, not the result, and you'll do well. So you want to learn about the practice, especially for beginners, you want to learn about the practice, how to do it, put your, put your mind there, how to do it well, how to do it properly. And that involves getting the right information. And that also involves thinking about how to apply it. And also, of course, to actually apply it. And then through your practice, then you uh, know better. Uh, 
Just like if you want to learn how to ride a bicycle, just a theory about what to do, that's not going to help. You have to just you have to get on the bicycle, you have to ride it, even if you don't, don't ride it well, even if you fall down and all that, you have to get on it. Yeah. So um, you need to just learn along the way. Never mind if you don't do well, just learn whatever it is. If you do well, learn from it. If you don't do well, learn from it. So there's no, you don't lose anything. Yeah. There's no problem about making mistakes. Make mistakes. We learn from mistakes. So if you are just interested to learn, then it doesn't matter what happens. You learn from what happens anyway. Right? We want to learn about a practice. And when we are able to practice well, uh, when your meditation is going smoothly, then you can learn more about yourself. What is this thing? This thing that's sometimes happy and that is uh, sometimes unhappy. What is this thing? I want to learn about this. So meditation teacher said uh, to somebody who asked him, what's, why do we meditate? And his answer was to understand yourself. To understand this thing. What is this? Why is this like this sometimes, like that sometimes? And so that when you can really, really understand this, you're not, you don't, you're not just sometimes happy and sometimes unhappy. It's as if like something random, depending on what happens outside. You learn how to be happier. You learn how to, at least sometimes when things don't go well, you learn not to suffer so much. It's not a random thing. It's not, uh, you're not, you're then not so much a victim of circumstances. You have more control over what happens, over your own happiness and suffering. <laughs> So why do we practice? We want to learn. And of course, ultimately, we want to be free from suffering. Just to give you a uh, brief understanding of this process of being free from suffering, the whole purpose uh, of the Buddha's teaching is to be free from suffering. The whole purpose of it. And uh, he outlined it in the form of the Four Noble Truths. Yeah, so the first one being suffering, and that is to be understood. The second one being um, the origin of suffering, and that is to be abandoned. Then there is the cessation of suffering, and that is to be witnessed. Oh, it's witness is not about getting. It's not even about getting freedom from suffering. It's about witnessing it because when there is enough understanding, you, you, don't, you don't actually see suffering, but you notice that suffering has ceased. Happens naturally. And lastly, um, that is the path leading to the ending of suffering. And that, that, is, that is what we need to cultivate. And through that, we get to understand suffering. Through that, we get to abandon suffering. Through that, we get to witness the cessation of suffering. So that's the brief idea of the vulnerable truth. And all this involves, all, all this requires direct knowledge. Direct knowledge means to say, you need to observe and see for yourself what it is. Yeah, it's not about, uh, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of Buddhists, uh, unfortunately, come to Buddhism and what they focus on is reading, 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 get a lot of theory, a lot of stuff, a lot of knowledge and no direct knowledge. No real knowledge. It's just a lot of book knowledge and they are happy with that. I think you people over here, you're different. Yeah. You're attending a retreat. Yeah. 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 Different 
species, different Buddhist species. Yeah, <laughs> more interest. Yeah, interested in direct knowledge. It's not to say that the theoretical knowledge is not useful. There are, in fact, I'm providing you theoretical knowledge, but there's no point having so much theories if you can't make use of it. You can't use that to free yourself from suffering, right? You can read all the suttas and maybe memorize them. Um, that doesn't free you from suffering. Yeah. Know this and know that, and maybe you can even debate with people <laughs> and this, chant that, and if your suffering is just as much, then what's it all for? In the suttas, the Buddha compared that to the, uh, the cow herd. You know, the, the guy who takes care of the cows, right? He, the cows don't belong to him. Yeah. So in, in, during that time, those cows, uh, what he was referring to, those cows were meant for milking. And uh, see, the cow herd doesn't get to taste the milk. He just take care of other people's cows. Yeah. So he was referring to the monks who might uh, just chant, memorize his teachings, but they don't practice. So therefore, they, they are like the cow herd. It's there, you know, the teachings are there, but they don't get to enjoy uh, the benefits of it. So we want direct knowledge. You know, the theoretical one, that's the one that frees you. Um, if you don't see how you are creating suffering, exactly how that happens, then you can't change. You need to know exactly what happens. And to do this, you need to be real to yourself. To so-called be yourself. To be real to yourself, you don't want to pretend. Whatever that's true that's happening within you that you can see, you, you want to acknowledge that as it is and not try to ignore. You want to be real to yourself so that you can know yourself or what actually is happening even if it's unpleasant, you want to know. You want to know the truth so that you can see according to reality. That's what we need to do. To know and see according to reality. That's, that's a phrase that happens a lot in the text. So what to do and how to do it? All right, now, firstly, if you have old ways of practice, um, I hope you can set them aside for now. Leave them, leave them aside. Even if you have meditated for a long, long time um, in some certain ways, um, aside for now. Yeah. Assume that you have never, ever meditated before. Sometimes I, I, I well, not sometimes, uh, I find that that's, that helps. That's good for me too. To assume that I've never meditated, I don't know anything, and what I want to know is what's happening now. That's all. <laughs> Stop everything and just be with the present. This, this is especially useful to, to remind ourselves to, to, to use, uh, to think of the practice this way. When we uh, so clouded, you know, you're trying to practice and then you find that something's not right, like very cloudy. Probably the thing that's clouding your mind is all those stuff, you know, those ideas. Yeah. So just drop everything and suddenly, oh, meditation becomes easy. <laughs> so drop those and start anew, have a beginner's mind that would help you a lot. to learn what is true. You're not trying to create anything. You're not trying to induce any kind of mental state. That, that is not, that, 
the Buddha's teaching. That's not Dhamma. Uh, trying to get somewhere, trying to make something happen. That's greed doing its job. That's not meditation. Yeah, that's, well, you can call it meditation. It's called greed meditation. <laughs> yeah. Greed doing the meditation. It's not wisdom. We want to meditate uh, using our wisdom, not greed. If you use greed to meditate, then of course you're increasing greed. You're using wisdom to meditate, then you're increasing wisdom. Now, the practice is called Satipatthana, Pali. Uh, to translate it into English, is establishing mindfulness. It's a practice of establishing mindfulness. What is mindfulness? Just briefly, it means um, remembering. Remembering to be aware, remembering to have the right ideas of the practice, remembering to relax, remembering, all this remembering. So let's do a little bit of practical uh, sitting, right? So you're sitting there right now, right? Uh, when I say we are doing practical sitting, uh, don't try to. Don't, don't, don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Don't, don't try to. Okay, we are going to do meditation right now. Okay? I see people doing like that. It's like to loosen themselves up and all that. It's like they're going for war. <laughs> don't do that, <laughs> right? We are not going for war. We are, <laughs> we are coming here. We're not trying to make ourselves become this and that. Be here. Just know yourself as you are right now. Like I said earlier, be yourself, be real. Try, don't even try to meditate. Take this meditation idea, throw it outside. Don't try to meditate. Yeah, funny thing for meditation teacher to say, isn't it? Don't try to meditate. <laughs> but really, don't try to meditate. Throw it out. Just be as you are. Just be as you are right now. So be as you are right now. You start to become more conscious of your being. You start to notice that you are actually breathing. With some some other things. Do you feel the sensations in your skin because the fan is blowing or, or maybe your air conditioner? Whatever it is, just know, just know what's happening for you right now. And this knowing is what we are trying to cultivate. Know that you are knowing. Is it difficult to know? Should, should that require a lot of effort? Doesn't. But it requires reminding. Because if we don't, after a while, the mind goes off to something else. Actually, knowing itself doesn't take a lot of effort. The effort that you need is remembering so that you can know as continuously as you can. The unity of that awareness is important. You can't force it to happen, but it is important. 
can force yourself to be continuous. If you try to force, you get tired. You won't, you won't last. Yeah? This is not a 100-meter dash. It's a marathon. Right? If you're doing a marathon, you don't... <laughs> you'll be gone after a while. Yeah. It's, it's like... It's more like jogging. Yeah? Most people who jog, you know, you know, if you just take your time, take it, take it easy, jog, to, 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 you can last for a long, long time. To, 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 to. But even uh, if you're just jogging, for some of you, if you are not yet uh, developed for jogging, not yet developed physically, cardiovascularly, then of course, you also cannot last. Yeah, same goes with meditation. And if you, uh, if you do it right, still you won't last because you're not uh, skilled at it yet. You're not, you don't have the, or you don't have the momentum yet, the momentum of the practice. So you won't last, you will stop and you say, let's start again. Fine. Just keep starting again. Let's start again and start again and start again. No problem. So, what can you do as you practice to remind yourself? You can, right? Let's try this. You can ask yourself the question, what am I doing now? You don't have to answer the question. It's just a question that prompts you to notice, to pay attention. You don't have to answer it. What am I doing? It's a question that directs the mind to pay attention. Doing. I can ask the question, how am I feeling? Same thing, you don't have to answer the question, just notice this question interest that is aroused, this interest makes the mind pay attention. So we need to do this again and again, yeah, to build it, to build the momentum. So does that take a lot of effort to pay attention? Yes or no? No. Yeah. It's not difficult to pay attention. The difficult part is remembering to pay attention. That's a difficult part. So how to do this difficult part? Well, uh, practice. Oh. <laughs> practice. How can, you pract how can you make yourself remember to be aware? That takes practice. It takes two things to do to practice well. It takes knowing how to. And not just that, you also need momentum. Yeah. If you know very well how to practice and then you, but you throw it away, uh, you go back, you'll fall back. Yeah. You slip back all the way because you uh, throw away the practice. So you do need, uh, even if you know how to do it already, you still do need to keep it up. Even if you don't know how to do it yet, if you try to keep it up, you won't find that you won't do it very uh, well. So it's, it's two, both of them. So no matter what, that's what we need to do, practice. As we try to remember to practice what happens, what happens is this, I, I need to tell you this so that you know that this should be the result of it, yeah? What happens is that your mind becomes clearer. Your awareness becomes more continuous. And as your mind becomes clearer, there's a sense of brightness in the mind. Uh, don't, don't expect this too soon, yeah? <laughs> but I'm just giving you, this is uh, telling you, this is the how, what would happen. For some of you, maybe you might find that happening sooner than uh, others, but it doesn't matter. Uh, just keep trying.
course, if you practice mindfulness repeatedly, that mindfulness also strengthens, you'll be able to remember the practice uh, better. When the mindfulness is strong, you might find you come to a point, you might find that it's very continuous. And if you were to lose the mindfulness, it snaps back within a few seconds. Yeah, you get back to it very, very easily. Right? Things that used to distract you, uh, make you lose awareness, that doesn't happen anymore, at least not so much. And then at the later point, when you really, really know how to practice, it's possible to sustain it for a long, long time without break. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that you have you are forcing it. No, that's just because momentum is well established. It's very easy to sustain that mindfulness when it happens. It's very, very comfortable. Uh, you'll be very, very happy, <laughs> literally very happy. What happens when we are not mindful? Well, I suppose I don't need to tell you uh, that. I suppose we are very well practiced in not being mindful. Right. So, uh, but if you have been practicing well and you you you're doing well, already, and then you, for whatever reason, you no longer practicing, your mindfulness drops. What happens is that your awareness drops. You become less consistent with your awareness. You forget a lot, which which means you're not mindful, and also the mind becomes dull. It becomes uh, not clear. Um, you you will drift, you you will tend to wander. Your mind wanders a lot, so that's what happens. You get into dreamy states, even. You no, know, when trying to meditate, and then you forget about mindfulness, and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> if if you tend to do that, I suggest that you keep your eyes open. Yeah. Uh, don't think that meditation has to be done with your eyes open. Oh, with the eyes closed. You can use, you can meditate with your eyes open. Yeah, you can try both. Open better or close better. Try and see for yourself. So this is what we want to do, to be mindful, to cultivate awareness, to know ourselves. Our job is not to know about other people. Yeah. So you're, you're in, on a retreat, Try to focus on yourself. Uh, if you have other people in your house, uh, leave them alone <laughs> yeah, as much as you can. Uh, leave them alone. Uh, they'll, they'll survive. <laughs> so know about yourself. Know your, what you're doing, how you're feeling, what's happening in this body and mind. If you're not, if you're walking, you can be aware of the walking. If you're sitting down, you can be aware of your breathing or the hearing or seeing, whatever that is obvious to you at the moment, right? And you're not sure what to do, you can ask yourself, what's obvious now? And just let the mind notice what's obvious. Simple. And if you can be aware, if you're aware, you are meditating. Right? Don't, don't try to concentrate. Don't try to concentrate on your breathing, consider this and that. Don't try to concentrate. That's not our job. We want to cultivate awareness. And when awareness is strong, you can be aware of many things at the same time. Do not try to concentrate. When you concentrate, you don't know much. Just know one thing or a few things. Yeah. We want to cultivate awareness so that we can see things clearly and we can see cause and effects of things. If you concentrate, you cannot see that. We want to see the cause and effects of things, and with that, we, we gain understanding, we have wisdom. And we want to do this in all our activities, whether we are eating, we are showering, we are doing our daily chores, whatever. It's not just sitting and walking meditation. We want to cultivate this awareness at all times in all activities, wherever you are. So open, be open to whatever that's happening. Wake. Right now, let's, uh, I know we are sitting down right now. So let's try a bit of movement kind of practice. Yeah. So can you 
move your hands about a bit. Feel your hands moving. You can move in any way you want to massage your head if you like. You want to do this if you like, whatever. <laughs> so can you feel your hands moving and do some stretching exercises? Yeah. Can you feel your body? Can you feel your body as you move your hands? Can you feel? Do some Tai Chi. <laughs> you feel, you feel your hands, you feel your body. Is it difficult to feel? So in fact, when you're moving a lot, it's easier to be aware. Yeah, some people tell me that sitting meditation very difficult. I always forget to be aware, but walking, ah, that's easier because there's movement. It's easier to be aware when there's movement. Yes. And yeah, there's not much happening. It's easier for the mind to feel bored. And then it, then it, it looks for something else to, uh, to, to stimulate itself. Yeah. So uh, usually some movements that helps. Still, we can't be moving all the time, right? <laughs> we, we still have to sit down sometimes. You move all the time, you'll be too tired. So, uh, so how much do we do that movement thing or, and how much do we not do the movement thing? Uh, depends, uh, up to you. How much do we should we do? We should be meditating while walking, or so-called walking meditation. Actually, you cannot find uh, this phrase walking meditation in the text or sitting meditation there's no such phrases but we have created these ideas uh, but what i would call would be like um you are meditating while you're walking you're meditating while you're sitting you're meditating while you're lying down you're meditating while you're standing yeah you're meditating regardless of what you're doing that would be a better idea so meditating happens regardless of how the body is at that moment. You can be taking a shower, you're meditating, or maybe you're not meditating. Yeah. You could be lying down and you're meditating or not. Because meditation is not what the body does, it's what the mind does. The mind is paying attention, is meditating. Even if you're talking, if you can be aware that you're talking, you're doing fine. In fact, it's very difficult to be aware while you're talking. Especially if you're engaged in some kind of frivolous topic. It's gone. It's gone in a short, short while. Yeah. Unless your, uh, your momentum is very strong. Then you can sustain it. But then when your momentum is very strong and your wisdom is strong, you, you won't be so interested in uh, frivolous topics. It's just not... You know, you know, just don't see the point of talking about those things. Yeah. Because wisdom knows what is necessary, what is not, what is useful and what is not. So we can be aware while you're physically moving and you're washing your face and you're sweeping the floor. Once I was sweeping the floor and I was feeling great. I was like, wow, the mind is so bright. I'm so happy. <laughs> not, just, not just me. I mean, there was also this young man from some European country. I forgot where. And uh, he had difficulty meditating while sitting and walking. But during sweeping, he does it very well. He said, wow. Sweeping, it's very easy to be aware during sweeping. Yeah. So, uh, so don't think that's not meditation. Don't think you have to be meditating while sitting and walking. Don't think that anything other than that is not really meditation. That's a strong idea. Your meditation is what your mind, meditation is what your mind does again and again. I have to uh, emphasize this point is what your mind does. If your mind is paying attention in the right way, with the right attitude, doing it the right, you're doing the right things with your mind, you're meditating. 
if you're not doing the right things with your mind, you're sitting down looking like you're meditating, you are not meditating. Yeah, that's just looking like meditating, but not meditating, or trying to meditate, but not really meditating. People could be sitting and sleeping. I know, I have practiced that very much. <laughs> Want to, we want to be equal in all postures. This is some uh, a phrase that is found in the text. How do you be equal in all postures? It doesn't mean that you sit for one hour, walk for one hour, lie down for one hour, stand for one hour. No, they'll be very tiring. Equal in all postures means equal in your practice, in your commitment to be aware. Sometimes people... When they sit down, they're very serious about it. Once they get up, phew, it's gone. Why? The commitment is gone. Why? Because they don't think that is really meditation. Really meditation. Really medit they don't feel like anything else other than sitting posture is real meditation. So the commitment goes away as soon as they get up. And okay, of course, you lose awareness quickly. We want to be equal in all postures. And if you can be equal, can be, then you can sustain it. We want to learn how to practice all the time. Then you have a good kind of practice, you know, a good quality practice. If you are just meditating while you're sitting and after that you're not, and that's not real meditation. Want to be free from suffering, and uh, you don't suffer only when you're sitting, right? <laughs> suffering can hit you anytime. So you need to practice at all times. Of course, there are certain situations where you find that it's difficult. Uh, like this guy who said he can meditate very well while walking and sitting, but once he starts doing some work, do some cleaning work and things like that, he can't. He can't sustain it. You'll, you'll forget. So what happens? You need to find some way, some kind of strategy to remember to be aware. You have to think of that even before you start doing those things. Yeah. And then only you can fill up all the gaps where you cannot do well, where you cannot sustain your mindfulness. And to learn how to be aware in all situations in all activities, in all places, then your practice can be good. Only then your awareness can be continuous and only then you can build the momentum. Like what I've told you just now is just general instructions. Yeah. Um, might be for some of you, you might have certain special, uh, you have certain special conditions that require a different set of instructions to begin with. So, uh, if this doesn't work for you, let me know. Right? If it doesn't work for you, you try it. after this, you try it. tomorrow, you try it, and then you find that uh, you can't, you just can't. It's just, uh, it's too difficult you are too, uh, you lose the, the mindfulness way too easily, um, get distracted too easily, or, you, or perhaps even you get angry or, or something happens, so you get sleepy or whatever, uh, then let me know, All right? Let's take a, what's the time now? Okay. Let's take a break, a toilet break. And during this time, toilet break is your practice time. Okay. There are no non-practice times. All times are practice times. Toilet break, in the toilet, outside the toilet, they're all practice times. Okay. So let's see how you can practice, whether you can sustain your mindfulness uh, during your break. All right. So we'll come back, uh, come back in five minutes. Well, 
Are you back? Okay, this is time for Q&A. So if any questions about the practice, um, is it time for it? To seek clarifications you have, if you'll meet with any difficulty, uh, show practice, uh, you can talk about it now. All right, uh, there's, uh, and then if you want to do that, you'll click the hand raise button and we'll, so we can talk. All right.